Welcome to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We are an apostolic, prayer, healing, deliverance, and prophetic global ministry. And our overseers are Apostle and Prophets Dr. Kilafo Z. Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. Our ministry is built on the apostolic and prophetic model, and the foundation of our ministry is Jesus Christ and His Kingdom. Located in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, the ministry celebrates 10 years of dedicated service. Parenthetically, our leaders also oversee Kingdom Apostolic Global Networks and have commissioned over 800 apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in over 30 nations, including South, East, and West Africa, Asia, USA, Bahamas, and the Caribbean. Visit us at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Let's go straight into the broadcast. Let's get into the word this morning. Hallelujah. Let me teach hallelujah. We're teaching on sonship. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And as a subtitle, Priests and Kings, we're coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 to 28. And also verses 45 to 50. First Corinthians, we bless the Lord for all of you here and listening and watching. We declare the blood of Jesus and the power of God be upon you. There is a power in this house today that is moving from this pulpit. It's coming directly from heaven through us into this house and into the airways. Hallelujah. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is exalted. Hallelujah. Come on, help me this morning. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In his Amen. presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Joy unspeakable. Amen. In his presence, there is power. So I want to let you know as we teach the word of the Lord, this is a word of the Lord straight from the throne of heaven. And I thank God that the Lord is strengthening us in his word. Amen? Amen. He is strengthening us. I want to always say that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I give him all the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. And in the course of your walk with Christ, always give Jesus all the praise. That's one of the weapons against the enemy. If you give Jesus all the praise, glory, and honor, guess what? You will not get tired. You will not get weary. You will not take on responsibilities in your lives, in your marriage, in your children, in your ministry that you're not supposed to carry. The Lord did not place the burden upon us. He said, come unto me, all ye that are what? Laden and of a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye. Amen. Come. Your heavy burden. Come if you're laden down. Why? He will give you rest. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, the Lord wants to give us rest, but in order yeah. for us to give us, uh, 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 Him to give us rest, we have to cast our cares upon Him. Amen. We have to give Him glory. If you're a pastor, listen to me. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. It is the Lord's house. This is not my house. I don't own it. This is the Lord's house. Amen. You are the Lord's people. I don't own you. Amen. These are the Amen. Lord's equipment. They belong to the Lord. Amen. It is the Lord's resources. It's the Lord's anointing. It's the Lord's worship. Hallelujah. And when you stay humble before the Lord and give Him the due glory, you live free in the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I've seen mighty men and women of God fall because they begin to take the glory of Jesus. If you talk for two hours and don't mention the name of Jesus once, something is wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't get Jesus' glory and recognition and honor. You don't make recognition of the Father, Elohim, Jehovah, Yahweh, the mighty God. If you don't make mention of, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit, His presence and giving Him glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. You are in spiritual pride because you believe the glory and the power and the might and the strength belong to you. Amen. Even when we pray. When we pray, we are petitioning the Lord to move on behalf of our prayers. Yes. So what am I talking about today? I'm talking about being the sons of God. I'm talking about being priests and kings. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, hallelujah, giving Jesus glory and honor and thanksgiving. Let's talk about this this morning. This whole world is searching for its true identity. I wrote a book, You Are My Father, I Am Your Son. Understanding Kingdom Sonship, you can go online and purchase that. That book I wrote over 10 years ago. 
Hallelujah and praise the Lord. The Lord has it in many nations around the world. Amen. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the Lord began to reveal to me at a very young age about his fatherhood. And I began to search it. And the Lord said, began to share in his word, I am a father to the fatherless. And I began to say, Lord, if you are my father, then I'm your son. Does that make sense? Sounds very simple, eh? You are your mother's daughter. You are your father's son. Hallelujah. Come on, help me somebody. Hallelujah. And so it sounds very simple, but then I began to go a little deeper. I said, Lord, then, if you are father, and you are who you are as a father, then I, in order for me to know who I am, I must begin to study who you are. Amen? Amen. Most of the people around the world don't know who they are because they don't know who their father is. The word father in the Old Testament is Abba. It means progenitor. It means source. It means provider. It means provision. It means the one from out of which we come from. The one who sustains us. Sustainer. Amen. He's the provider. He's the sustainer. He is the source. He is the progenitor. If you're writing, make a note of that. And the New Testament is pater, P-A-T-E-R, which means the same thing. Source, light, progenitor, provision. He is our being. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. So in Elohim. So in the Old Testament, the word God comes from the word Elohim or Jehovah. Adonai, El Elyon. If you look in the Old Testament, you'll see those words. El Shaddai, Adonai, Elohim. But God is really Adonai, which means sovereign ruler. And his name is Elohim. He revealed himself as Jehovah or Yahweh. So when we talk about this, we're talking about the Father who revealed himself in the Old Testament as Jehovah, which is the I am that I am. Amen. Which means he is what he is. In the past he is. Today he is. In the future he is. He is what he is. What he is. What he is. What he is. Hallelujah. Amen. So he is. I am. What is I am? I am. What is I am? I am. I am everything. I am. Hallelujah. That is who he reveals himself in glory and in power. The I am God. Who do I say you are? Who do I say has sent me? Moses said to him. In the latter part of the dry deserts, Moses stood and he saw a burning bush that did not consume itself. He wasn't amused by a burning bush. He saw burning bushes all the time. He was amused by the fact that there's a bush that was burning was not consuming it. <laughs> he said, who is this? Now Moses was quite trained because before he went into the wilderness, he, he, he was in contact with his mother in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Moses, contrary to some would have said, Moses knew his identity because he had his mother and his sister telling him about the ways of Israel and the God of Israel. So when it was time and an Egyptian began to fight against an Israel brother, he slew that brother because he knew how huh, something rose up with him because he knew his identity as a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew his destiny. He knew his purpose. He knew his identity. He identified with the children of God in Egypt. Yes. He identified with their suffering. And so when that bush began to burn, he knew it was the when, 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 when Jehovah said, I am, he knew exactly who he was talking about. He knew exactly from the Hebrew tongue. When the Lord said in the Hebrew tongue, in the Hebrew language, his name, I am, he knew who it was because he was taught about this God all of his life. So, I begin to study if this God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. He is a spirit. God is love. Elohim is love. Jehovah is love. And I began to study the qualities. He's a king. The Lord is king over all the earth. He owns a cattle on a thousand hill. He made us and not we ourselves. He is a mighty God. The everlasting father. The great I am. He who was and is and is to come, both now and ever. Hallelujah, I begin to study a father. I'm 
speaking to someone, someone today who never knew their father biologically, or someone today who never had a relationship with their father. That's all right. You have a heavenly father who is greater than your earthly father. Amen. Oh, come on, help me. Amen. I'm jumping ahead of myself. That's why Jesus said, if your earthly father's know how to give you good gifts, much less your heavenly father. The world is in crisis because if you don't have a good foundation of a good early father, sometimes it's a little difficult understanding the nature of your heavenly father. Amen. If you don't have a father who nurtured and protected, it's sometimes it's difficult. But God in his wisdom has surpassed that through his word and through his Holy Spirit. Even if you did not have a good relationship with your father or an uncle or even a mother or a parent, you still can learn and experience the love of your heavenly father. Amen. He comes to us and reveals himself. Amen. So I began over the last 10 plus years maybe about 15 years, began to pursue and seek from Genesis to Revelation everything I could learn about the Father in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. Can you help me? I began to study in the New Testament and listen to every word that Jesus spoke. I began to read it. I began to listen it on audio. Hallelujah. My wife and I, over the last few years, been listening to the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every word he said in the New Testament. Over and over and over. I began to find out the word Father in the Old Testament, New Testament, and find it and search out the character and qualities of the mighty God. He's not only a distant God, but He is a Father. This is what makes us different from Islam, from Buddhism, from Hinduism, from every other hallelujah religion. This is what makes us different. Our God, who is our Savior and King. It's not only a God, but he is a loving father. Amen. Buddha is not a loving father. Muhammad is not a loving father. He's some distant being that man worship. Oh, hallelujah. When you have a father, that's privilege. Say privilege. privilege. When you have a father, that's access. Because the Father provides you with provision. Yes. He introduced you to his family. He introduced you to other loved ones. Hallelujah. In the Jewish and Hebrew culture, the Father at a certain age brought a man into maturity. Amen. Hallelujah. It's called a bar mitzvah. Hallelujah. 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 They have one for the girls, one for the boys. And it's a time when the young boy, when he reaches 11, 12, they have a special ceremony. Even to today, a mitzvah, where they bring a special celebration and the priests and the rabbi and the friends of the father and all of the family initiates the boy into man at a 12. Hallelujah. I'm going to help you somebody. I'm talking about sons of Elohim this morning. Priests and kings. We'll see how far we go. And so at that ceremony, even up to today in 2018, that young man... Is consecrated and a ceremony is performed to bring that young boy from boyhood into manhood. You don't just jump into manhood. The rest of the world just assumes that when you reach 12, hallelujah, not even 12, when you reach 18 or 21 or 30, you're automatically a man. And that's why there are many persons around the world, men, who are men by age but still boys internally. <laughs> Because they were never brought into manhood. That's the job of a father. To bring a boy into manhood. Mm -hmm. And also the girl. They have a celebration in the Hebrew uh, culture. That brings girls into womanhood. A woman don't just pop and become a woman. Because hallelujah. At a certain age her body develops. That's the problem in the western world. Which is different from the middle east. And the eastern world. They bring a certain level. I pray around the world. We do that. That is why at 12, Jesus was able to talk that way. We got to understand the culture and the history of why when he was in the temple, when Mary and Joseph left him, and how old was he? 12 years old. How old was he? 12. And they traveled for a day or two and realized Jesus was left behind. And they went back to him and said, what happened? Why did you do this? Jesus said, this? Pardon me? 
Mary, Joseph, don't you know I'm about my father's business? He was in being rude. So you got to understand the culture. You got to understand the word of God. You got to understand at 12, a young boy was brought into manhood. So Jesus was saying, hallelujah, just like now, when they bring the boy to that time of coming into manhood, all of the father's friends and business contacts are introduced to the young boy. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, the young boy begins to act and transact business on behalf of the father. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 They're going to break this teaching now. So at 12, now all around the world, Jewish boys at 12, they begin to act and transact business on behalf of their father at 12. Mary and Joseph understood exactly what Jesus was saying. That's why they didn't beat him. <laughs> in the Bahamas, in the Caribbean, and around the world, you would get a beating if you did that. But Mary understood what he was saying. I am 12 now. I'm a man. I've come into my purpose and my identity. And from this point on, I'm about my father's business. What, about, what does it mean to be about the father's business? In that day, if father's business mean you that son could go to the bank and sign on behalf of the father. Buy and sell on behalf of the father. Make trans transactions on behalf of the father just as if the father had given full permission. That's why the boys had to know fully their father's business. Because once they brought them into that and off age, they could act. So Jesus was saying, my father brought me into the level of maturity. Now I must do my father's business. And so as we talk about sons of God, I begin to study the father. I encourage every one of you from Genesis to Revelation to begin to study the father, the nature of the father. If I'm the, the father, the heavenly father, we ought to study him. If I'm a son, if you and I are a son of the Heavenly Father, are you with me? If we are the son, then we have the DNA of the Father. Amen? Amen. What is the DNA? We have the genetic makeup. Yes. What does the genetic makeup do? Hallelujah. If you look at your father, if I look at mine, we have certain characteristics of our earthly father, don't we? Some of us might talk like our father, walk like our father, have a nose like our father. Air, this is all the genes. Whenever we were born, the mother's egg and the father's sperm came together. Half of the genes came from the father, half from the mother. And you begin to have a blend of both of their, not only character, but personality. Come on, Shana, hallelujah. 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 Has anyone ever said, boy, you have the same actions like your father? Yes. You just like your uncles. You like your aunties. You you might have never met them, but you talk just like one of your uncle who live on another con continent somewhere in the world. You might have never met them, but you might have the same voice. Mm -hmm. You might walk like your father. Yes. You might have mannerism and ways like your father. Even though you didn't grow up in the same house, you find yourself acting just like your mother or your father. Why? We carry Amen. the DNA. We carry the genes. Amen. Amen. Even if you never grew up in the house, you carry the genes. You look like them. You sound like them. You act like them. And if you grow up in the house with them, you might even cook like them. You drive like them. You conduct business like them. Why? Because yeah. you, you, you not only have their DNA, you've learned their personality. Amen. Sometimes the more we try to be different from our parents, the more we become them. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. When you're a child, hallelujah. the more you despise some of their behavior and their correction, now you are married and as a parent, you're doing some of the same things mama did. Yes. Or Grammy did. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's in your nature. So we had to learn the same two things. Character of God. How does he look? He's a spirit. Then the nature of God, he's holy. Anyone who's a son of God must have holiness. Must God is love, must walk in love. We ought to be just like our father. 
So sin is a violation of the nature and the character of our Father and of us. That's why Jesus said at one point to some of the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are just like your father, Satan. He said, you don't like me. You don't walk in love. You don't walk in holiness. You don't have my DNA. You are after your father, Satan. There are some people walking today, they do not have the characteristic and personality of Jesus. They do not have his DNA. He's not their father. Amen. Satan is some people's father. Amen. Sad to say, amen. 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 So Jesus, when he came to earth, I'm going to show you, came to restore us to sonship. Amen. Before he restored us to sonship, he went to be baptized. You know that in the book of John. And the Bible said, and when he went down, the voice said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Remember that? Jesus himself had to be validated by the Father. Oh my God, there's nothing like vile validations of a father. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Can you bear witness to that? How many of you had an earthly father? You might not have seen him, they might not have given you money, but they said, man, I'm proud of you. That made you weak. Amen? Amen. Why? We need a father's affirmation. Yes. We need a father's love. We need a father's support. I'm praying for you, son, daughter. I love you, son, daughter. You make me proud, son and daughter. We long from that from, from our mother and our fathers. Amen. Amen? Because we need affirmation. Amen. And we need to give our children that. We might not have all the money to give them, but I love you. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. Amen. Goes to spiritual Amen. fathers too. Oh, and what joy I had when the spiritual fathers or men who I loved and followed their ministry and was mentored by their ministry. Hallelujah. You know, you know something? Let me finish that thought. And they spoke, I'm proud of you. One in particular I remember, and I say it without a shame. I remember when Dr. Miles Monroe, he did a forward on my book. Oh, I loved the man's ministry and followed his ministry many years. He came in, he did a presentation with the doctors here. After when I went and talked to his wife, we shared, and he and his wife was right there. And his wife, and he was sharing, and we were talking. And I said, man, thank you so much. And we were sharing, and he said, I'm proud of you. Something like that. And I, and he, I remember, that still rings in my head. That had such an impact on my life. Not too long after that, the next year, I think he was in the crash, sadly. After that, I began to use that simple thing. That had such an impact on me, I began to say that to other people. Why? He was a spiritual mentor and father I looked up to and honored. I mean, I can tell the other, other, other mighty men of God who, that we look for it. Why? We look for validation. Yes. Let's talk to Bishop Ross. Last week you were on the phone, we spoke to him on the phone. He said, yeah, you are my son. You'll always be my son. Amen. Bishop Rodney Roberts, man of God, I'm praying for you. How's the wife? How's the family? We need to connect soon and talk. Hallelujah. But what does it say? Man, let me tell you something. You and I, we don't understand it all until now the Lord has revealed us. Each and every one of us need the validation of a father. Whether it's a biological or a spiritual or a father figure, a father mentor in our lives. Hallelujah. What do you think the cries and the crime that is taking place? Young girls who are looking for love from a father, from a male figure. Where they never got it from a male figure. Hallelujah. They're searching and looking for it. And any man who comes and validate them and say, you're beautiful, you're smart, your pretty eyes. Oh, look at you, sexy. Oh, man, look here. You're the greatest. You're the best. Oh, yeah. Why? Because it's in a woman's nature to be validated by a male authority. A mother could say that and she wouldn't say, okay, mommy, thank you, whatever. Let daddy say that. Or let a man say that. Why these young men pulling out guns and killing and destroying and sweeping through? Why? They never had a father to say, hey, son, I love you. You are a man of God. I support you. They might be able to give him all the money in the world, but I love you and I support you. I'm proud of you. And 
Call them up. Say, how are you doing? Remember the late Apostle Virtual Baird from Trinidad, another mentor. When I was in Trinidad every other week, he would call early in the morning. How are you, son? I'm praying for you. When I got back home, he called overseas. Son, how are you? How is your faith? How are the people of God? And that voice over the years rang in my spirit. I got to travel with him. What am I saying? And the privilege of us to travel with him. That voice. Hallelujah. 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 The society is out of order. Let me show you why. So we're talking about the fatherhood. You, you, you won't understand sonship until you understand fatherhood. Yeah. And the greatest example of a fatherhood is the heavenly father. Understanding a relationship in deep with him. That's why we worship this morning. We just wanted to wait in the father's presence. We don't need a preacher. We don't need a teacher. We need the father's presence. We need the father's affirmation. We need to talk to the Father. We need to be restored to the Father. We need to be reacquainted with the Father. We need to tired of service as usual. We need an encounter with the eternal Father. Come on, give him praise. Yes. Church is now about man. I don't want just a word from a man or a woman. I don't want, hallelujah, another personality or another, hallelujah, comedian or another star. I need a deep, intimate love relationship with my heavenly Father. Lead me to my Father. Lead me to my source. Lead me to my true identity. Not as an African. Not as a West Indian. Not as a Caribbean. Not as a black man. Not as a white man. Not as a Hispanic. Hallelujah. Not from a nation, a region, or continent. All of these are limits. Not by my academic status. Not by my financial position. I need an identity that goes deep within my nature and my nature is spiritual because God is a spirit and he created me and there is tons of things about you and I in the spirit that we have yet to uncover. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you and I were to know our fullness in the Father, eternal Father, Amen. and all things he's given to us through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ, we will be limitless. Amen. We will be unstoppable. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to somebody. If you spend time knowing your Father, hallelujah, the resources of this world will be yours. The kingdoms of this earth will be yours. The powers of darkness will tremble. Hallelujah. If you know who you are, how do I know? Let's get into the word. Mm, 1 Corinthians 15. Hey! I'll see glory to the name of Jesus. Oh God, you will be limitless today. The devil fought this message for years. We thank God for his greatness. We know that God is a great God. He is Amen. a powerful God. And we appreciate Jesus. And we know we are sons of God. Amen. He said, to us when just receive him, to them give power to yes. become the sons of God. So today we just thank God for his greatness and his mercy and we thank God for the powerful word of God. Praise the Lord. There's power in Jesus, deliverance in Jesus, Amen. and healing in Jesus. We just thank God because he's a great and mighty God. Give God Amen. thanks. We give a praise for the word today. What a word today. God bless you, God keep you, God strengthen you on today. Thank you and praise you and give God all the praise. Give God all the honor and the glory for this great void on today coming from our apostle today in Jesus' name. You were listening to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International, where the leaders are Apostle and Prophets, Dr. Kilafo Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. If this message was a blessing to you, or you would like to partner with us and make a donation, contact us at telephone 1-242-352-2130, or email us at K-A-M-G Bahamas at gmail.com. Visit our website at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Be blessed and join us again soon for another Kingdom Come Now broadcast.